November 1st, 2008, I began reading my first Russell book, The Secret of Light, by Dr. Walter Russell. Upon checking just a few weeks ago, in conversation with my dear Lori, I realized, having always signed the books I read, that it would be 11 years to the day that I started this book, and am now here speaking to you this November 1st. Talk about synchronous. <laughs> the entire move began on November 1st, one year ago. It is fitting that we should be having our grand opening this day. The stars and planets have aligned and we have come full circle to complete a dream that many in our organization have long desired to see once again come to pass. Great art deserves an audience. Inspiration is best shared. And we intend as an organization to inspire our student body, our neighbors in business, our community, to contribute to the uplift of humanity as a whole and hold true to the virtuous life path good character affords. From 1948 to 1998, the university occupied historic Swannanoa Palace as a world cultural center for the arts and to display the incredible legacy of Dr. Walter Russell. Founded by Dr. Walter and Leo Russell, the university's primary mission was to teach the science of man and the purpose of man's soul to the world at large. After 70 plus years, more than 5 million students worldwide have studied these teachings in an effort to unfold their inner genius through character building and self-unfoldment. To this day, the university is shipping over 4,000 orders per year around the world to people eager to learn what the Russells had to teach, primarily universal law, living philosophy, and natural science. Our goal at the university is to continue assisting in that mission. In times such as these, the world needs inspiration. Nevertheless, this, this theme has clear in my mind, so I've been 
wide awake thinking it. I went to the beer and prayed it. That night I prayed it for some of my students who came here. One of them said it sounded like falling leaves, so falling leaves it is. I remember first encountering the warehouse in 2015. The massive amount of art and sculpture that was on shelves and the, the sort of a bit of disarray, <laughs> if you will, and it was something of an effort to really, you know, get everything into order to be moved in the first place. So after that, I'm glad to say we did have some good times. Yes, in between did. the seriousness of it all and, uh, you know, horsing around a little bit. Folks, we're making an appeal to you today <laughs> to save this man from meteorocracy. <laughs> so whatever you can do would be greatly appreciated, and we thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. He's, he's stuck like that. <laughs> you got to keep things, you know, fun, if you will. But yeah, it was a massive undertaking. I mean, the things that were on the shelves that uh, were going to need to be moved, that weren't packed, that were not crated, uh, it was gonna require some moving ingenuity. And I knew that coming into the place for the first time and seeing just the massive amounts of work strewn all over the warehouse. So, you know, that in itself was quite an effort to undertake. Well, we got it done, nonetheless, and with some laughs along the way. There's the closet. Guys, this person showed up at our warehouse with this outfit. No, 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 that's a woman's hat. That is like not a woman's hat. Between a golf hat, a hunter's well, hat, and a... I think it's a, a woman's hat. And then, there's a clown in every group. Here, it says. There he is. Gray felt hat with black ribbon. Yeah. Doctor's, doctor's hat. hat. Darren, what do you think of this fiasco? I think uh, is it is it going all right? It's or? crushed it's in. You just well. have to push it out. Darren, could you tell the world what the hell happened to Jesus? Where is his head, man? He smell. lost his head. Well, I formed the Museum and Art Committee in 2017 to look at the viability of finding a place somewhere close to Swannanoa, preferably, so that uh, we could continue to have a presence close to the mountain. So I think Swannanoa is a big part of the history of USP. So Matthew, how did you come across the Porsche building? Well, the Porsche building was pointed out to us by the ladies at the Wayne Theater who had mentioned to us at our 2017 homecoming that there was this building across the street that was available. Uh, we were looking at other properties down in the floodplain and they advised that you probably don't want to have this really nice artwork anywhere near a floodplain. So upon meeting uh, Phyllis and Weldon Scroggum, who was the brother and sister-in-law of Gary and Linda Scroggum, the owners of the warehouse, uh, it's kind of like keeping it all in the family. You know, we were able to work out a deal and enter into negotiations for the property. It's a beautiful building when we first encountered it. A lot of space and I instantly saw the potential for displaying artwork. What do you feel was your biggest obstacle along the way? Well, the biggest obstacle I think was just trying to share what it was I saw at the end of the road with other people. You now I faced a couple mutinies <laughs> just due to the fact that, you know, when you have a, such a vision ingrained in your head and you don't have the ability to express what that vision is to others, there tends to be that uh, disconnect a little bit of uh, flaring temper, perhaps. And it's hard to hold to a vision that you have, especially when others and their ideas are involved. But, I mean, you do the best you can and go with it, and we were able to move past those obstacles. So is it true that you had a fine staff and support team behind you? We heard rumors and such. I had about the best staff and support team you can possibly want. Uh, definitely the best volunteer I ever had in you, John. So, wow. and uh, if it weren't for all the laughter, you know, and the fun times that we made of it as well, it probably would have been more than any of us could have bared. But uh, 
we did great with what we had. Awesome. One very special friend and sister, Cynthia Lewis. As our longest serving employee, Cindy is like a warm wind in the sails. She brings that much needed and tireless work ethic with her wherever she goes. So Cindy, tell us about the move from 178 Russell Way down to the new location. Well, I think it was really wonderful because I really do love the new packing area in the museum and it's a lot easier, it's a lot more organized, and I love it, and I love that we made the house into a home. It's so much nicer now up there, and I love working out of the museum. It's very inspirational. When the going gets tough, Cindy says, let's go. <laughs> what is the hardest thing you remember about this entire move? The biggest challenge? Yes. Well, the biggest challenge were those tabletops. Those was very heavy tabletops with the archives and, um, you know, moving those because everything else that was heavy we could move with the forklift, but we had to do the tabletops with all the people. But it was amazing and it showed me how God will work with you, not for you, because I can't believe how we got them all on the truck, off the truck, and then got them all in their places in the museum. But quite honestly, that whole move was not really hard. It was so wonderful with the people that did it because I was the one that helped move out of the palace and that was very sad and heartbreaking. So honestly, the move from the warehouse to the new museum was all uplifting and joyful. You've been the university's longest employee. What's your favorite memory of your time at the USP? Oh goodness gracious, I have so many wonderful <laughs> memories. <laughs> because of course I loved I loved the museum in Swannanoa. It was very beautiful and keeping the grounds very lovely for all those years. But probably I still think that the move here and the grand opening here was wonderful. So that sort of trumps all my other memories. The, the moment that, you know, we opened the whole place to everyone. And on a very personal level, my little display of Leo and Walter's clothing and personal things is my favorite thing here. And also putting the books on the library shelves. All Russell books on the shelves got me to know them more personally. So I love that. I have many, 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 many good memories. <laughs> I'm very grateful to count you as a friend and co-worker in this massive effort of preserving the Russell legacy. I could not have done this without you, and you are truly an inspiration to yeah. me. We love you too. John Bonsall. What does one say of John Bonsall? <laughs> ah, he's like a king in the throne right there. Assistant to the President, lead volunteer, and his lovely partner, Karen Burns, thank you for your unwavering support. What was the most challenging part of this entire move? Well, not having worked with you, Matt, before, and other than Jim, I hadn't worked with anybody else, and I'm thinking, oh boy, we got seven personalities coming together. We're gonna to move all this stuff and coordinate it over a short period of time, and what you wanted to achieve, and I'm like, okay, I like the timeline, and you put everything together. So, uh, for me, I had to kind of just stand back and observe a little bit to see how you wanted things done and so on. And uh, But the one thing that stands out for me in that move was how you um, wanted to make sure that everything we did was to preserve the artwork, make sure nothing, no mistakes, no breakages, whatever. And I truly respected that. I thought, well, you know, the message is in good hands here. So, uh, but once we started working together and everybody could see who was doing what and how they were going to do it, I was like, okay, we got this. So, yeah, that was good. That was good. So, John, being that you actually set up every single display with me, uh, we worked together as a team on virtually every display in here. What is your favorite display of all of them? Ooh, favorite. Um, mm -mm -mm. I would say the uh, Mark Twain Memorial 
you know, we had all these drawings, and then we had to follow the flow, you know, of the Mark Twain Memorial itself. And if people have never seen the uh, science drawings that Doctor did before he started putting things together on the Mark Twain, and that's what we did. And putting those together in the sequence, you stand back, we looked at each other and went, we high-fived and said, yeah, we got this. But um, it was a lot of work, a lot of work. And then we started to get into our sink and we didn't even have to speak to each other as we were hanging this stuff. We knew what each other was going to do in advance and so on and it, and it went, went well, beautiful. And so our grand opening, to see the success, the comments that people made, you know, you can kind of say to yourself, well, I guess we did okay. But I will tell you this, the one thing that I followed in all that we did together, let's keep hearing Leo say the word balance. It must be balanced. And that's what we followed. And I know you understood that and I understood it. And that's what we worked towards and it came together beautifully. So that was, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun in seeing that. When the message itself, when I say the message, I'm talking the artwork and so on. When we left the mountain, that it broke my heart to know that because Leo looked me in the eye one day and she said, Johnny, nothing in this building is ever to be changed or moved. It's complete, it's done as is. And then once I saw things, you know, get packed up, come off the mountain, it was just a heartbreaker. And to see us revise, if you will, rekindle, relive, bring this message back to this building and to see what we have accomplished, you know, my heart has been warmed by that. So I'm glad to see where it is now. And then moving forward, my God, man, we have, you know, yes. The sky is the limit. The sky is the limit with what we're going to do, and we're going to keep moving this thing forward. So, Excellent. you got it. Jim Porter, where are you, Jim? Aha. <laughs> Operations manager, Jim and his lovely wife, Jacqueline, thank you for your tireless dedication and many years of volunteer service to this organization. Jim was hired in July and conducts the most splendid tours of the museum. Jim, what do you recall as being the most difficult part of this entire move? Finding a building to move to. It was, uh, that was the greater challenge. That's what took the bulk of the time. And uh, of course, once we found that building that we're standing in now, all of us innately knew this was the place. Jim, you were at the palace working for Leo from 1976 through 77. Correct. What is one of your fonder memories of that experience? That's easy. My fondest memories were the days that I would be able to take an hour to an hour and a half and walk around the woods behind the property with Mrs. Russell. They were teaching moments that still rise up in my memory and teach me to this very day. Jim, we all here share a vision for the future of USP. What is yours? Mine is the same as the Russell's vision as it was given to them. They were here to teach mankind as a whole how to awaken his inner genius and leave the barbarian age that we've been in behind. That's my goal. I'd like to thank a few more people, those whom I could not have accomplished any of this without their tireless dedication, help, and service to this organization. Darren Cologne, Chief Science Officer, thank you for all your hard work and assistance with this massive effort. Some great innovations in energy production are going to come from our science and research department in the coming months and years ahead. So stay tuned for that, folks. Thank you, Darren. So Darren, you are USP's Chief Archivist. Tell us about the move of the archives and all the file cabinets. Yeah, so we had uh many, many um, uh, fireproof cabinets that uh, we had to move from the location at uh, the guest house to the new location here. And uh, it involved basically taking out every drawer <laughs> of every cabinet. Um, and uh, some of them are filled with concrete, uh, which is quite difficult to move even when they're empty. So uh, it, was, it was a big project. It took Jim Porter, John Bonsell, and myself to actually physically move the cabinets and then uh, begin all the work of reorganizing uh, 
you know, the, all the documents in the archives. So what is your favorite memory so far here at the USB? Uh, probably finishing the science room and uh, getting to see the entire display of his artwork for the first time. I don't think any of us, any of us have really seen all of the documents kind of laid out in a strategic way. So for me, it was just amazing to see it all under one roof. And Darren, ultimately, where do you see the future of the USP taking all of us? Hmm. Well, I hope we can spread the message out there. I hope the people who are looking for something bigger and something to be involved in can find us and uh, be called to it. And I think I would like to see Walter get some much deserved credit in the scientific world. Um, that's my, my greatest hope. Michaela Presti, operations assistant intern. My daughter who was brave enough to follow me from Missouri to take an active role in the day-to-day -day operations of this organization. She has been a tremendous help. Thank you, Michaela. Initially, what made you become interested in the University of Science and Philosophy and the Russell teachings? Well, I was first introduced to it by my father, Matt Presti, who is the president currently. Party. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he had introduced it to me whenever I was young, and I didn't really get it entirely, but uh, once I started college in January 2017, I did a lot of um, just uh, self-discovery, I suppose. I um, read a lot of the Russell's work. I started out with uh, God Will Work With You But Not For You, and I spent a lot of time alone in nature, and it kind of drove me to learn more about it. And then I visited here in May of 2017 and met all the wonderful people that run the university, and um, I was hooked since then. What is the most difficult thing about the move that you recall? I would say probably moving the Christ statue. He was in a very awkward position in the warehouse and he, that is just the heaviest piece of statuary that we had to move and we had to put ratchet straps underneath his shoulders and lift it with a forklift with a bunch of people around it guiding him so we did not drop him <laughs> or damage the statue in any way and that was beyond terrifying to watch happen, but uh, it, that was definitely one of the hardest things that we encountered during the move was moving that giant statue from uh, onto the truck and then holding it in place and positioning it where it wouldn't fall over. And then the Four Freedoms too, of course, that giant box, just about any big and bulky item was as difficult as can be. When you think of the future, what is your vision for the University of Science and Philosophy? I'm really excited for, uh, since we have this museum open and we have this uh, place where people can gather and we're going to have events, it's, I think it's, it's going to be greater than it's ever been. We have a more opportunity, more marketing opportunity with the internet. They didn't have that back in the uh, 70s and the 80s. And um, I think now more than ever the world really needs it and it's going to be like a beacon of light in a really dark place and so I'm, I'm excited for uh, being able to help people, really help people. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. The mastery of the five fine arts that you see before you tonight stands as an example of the divinity in man expressed. As God expresses divinity through nature, man expresses God through art. We aim to continue the 70 plus year old mission and tradition of teaching the process of self unfoldment through the study of the science of man to those who seek it. Our board of directors, William Cranwell, for your generosity in gifting this building to the university. Without you, none of this would have been possible. We are indebted to you. Thank you to you and Ellen both. Dr. Tim Binder, past president of the USP, couldn't be here with us tonight. Jim Haynes, our Vice President Secretary of the USP, and Tyler Moore, our Treasurer, long-term board members whose unwavering dedication is greatly appreciated. Thank you both for your many years of service to the USP. Richard Dulaney, Richard, where are you? Right here. Ah, yes. 
director for the Center of the One Heart, who helped carry the torch forward during our nearly 21 years in warehouse and storage captivity. <laughs> Richard continued the homecoming tradition at Swananoa through the One Heart organization and its members, for which we are thankful. Samuel Spiker, Sam, our newest board member, where are you? There he is. Hi, right, Sammy. Spike. Spike, <laughs> whose unwavering support of the Russell teachings continues to this day. Thank you, Sam. A very special and dear friend and brother to my heart, our own chairman of the board and president emeritus, Mr. Michael P. Hudak. Michael, Michael is my mentor, coach, teacher, and a gem of a man. You are one of a kind, and I thank you from my heart for all of your support and guidance over these last few years in helping me with the birthing of this great legacy back onto the world stage. You, sir, are truly appreciated. Thank you. I might say one thing. Sure, of course. I thank you to each and every one of you that are here because you're the energy and you're the ones to make this a wonderful event. Please remember it, please share it with others. But this wonderful institution sits here for the spirit of raising consciousness, which we so desperately need in this planet. Bless you all, thank you. Ready? Yep. All right, it works. I want to thank all of our wonderful donors, our great volunteers, and the student body who have unwaveringly contributed to the university over these many years. We could not have done this without you. I know I may have forgotten many names. If you are among those, please know I'm grateful for all your support to the USP and its mission. But one I must mention, if I am to survive until morning, <laughs> is my lovely soulmate and partner in life, the First Lady of the USP, Lori Preston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> U.S. President John Adams had his closest advisor, Abigail. You are my Abigail. If there was ever any truth to these teachings, then the extraordinary power of man-woman balance is proof positive that they not only work, but serve to guide those who live with balance to any end so desired. All things are possible with love. And from my own personal experience, your love, counsel, and advice helped make all this possible. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. Finally, and last but not least, I would like to thank God, the Creator, for this opportunity to serve my fellow man. All things through you and with you are made possible. This much I know. Mm -hmm. You are the one to whom all credit is given here tonight. Thank you, God, for working me.